checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. Good crowd. I know a lot of people want to jump to Roman and Jacob Fatu. I get it, because you want to see that rather than Solo. But look, Solo's the final boss of this particular thing. And I can't wait to see, forget about Fatu for a minute. I want to see Roman Reigns and Tamatanga because I think a lot of people now have realized who maybe either forgot about him, didn't know about him because he was in New Japan, maybe took him for granted because he was in New Japan for so long. He's really showing out. As much as people like to poke fun at, at Tangaloa, really Tamatanga, this is the time for him to step up. This He's in his 40s. This was going to be his big chance. He has taken the ball and absolutely ran with it. And at some point down the line, I would love to see him against Reigns. Now, Tom, you are a former denizen of the city of Orlando, correct? That is true. I lived there for 10 years. At the show on Friday, WWE announced that they would be back in Orlando at the Kia Center on Saturday, December 28th, which is the same night AEW is running World's End, 16 miles east at Edition Financial Arena. Deliciously petty. In fact, I wrote that on Twitter. I can appreciate the pettiness, but WWE running a house show head up with World's End also seems extremely masturbatory. I had somebody from WWE, what are you, big mad about this? I'm not mad about this. I'm just stating a fact here. It is deliciously petty, and you do, they can do what they want, but it's also extremely masturbatory because is this really going to hurt AEW if you were not going to the AEW show? Uh, you know, I guess this gave you a chance to do something that night, but I would think anybody that is an AEW fan looks at this and just, it can only help to me, you know, because it lobs a, a, another salvo at those guys and goes, okay, well, fine, screw you. I'm going to go out to the show. I just don't see how this actually hurts AEW at all. I don't see how it helps WWE, but it does allow them the opportunity to, as I said, pull it out, lay it out, and just, you know... Have fun at AEW's expense. What do you think about this uh, piece of uh, counter-programming? Well, I mean, they're, they're likely, with traffic, you're looking at probably 30 minutes, I would say, between the two places. One of them is on the campus of UCF. The Edition Financial Arena is on campus at UCF, which is, yeah, I you know... It, it was about 30 minutes back when I lived there, and traffic's only gotten worse since then. Um, that's a 10,000 seat arena. I don't know what AEW will have it, you know, laid out for. Uh, but I would, I mean, these WWE holiday if if shows, these WWE holiday shows do pretty well, don't they? They look, they do. And what was pointed out to me too was. They did this show in Orlando the same way they do them for the Garden. Obviously, the Garden has got the tradition, and they will be there on Boxing Day on the 26th. But it's not like Orlando hasn't had this show. But with that said, it's not like it's such a tradition there where you couldn't have held it somewhere else in Florida. You could have held it anywhere and sold out and made money. They just decided to do it again there. Well, whose headquarters are in Orlando? Is it AEW no. or is it WWE? So, TNA, I mean, maybe? oh, wait, that was a long time ago. <laughs> if you want to look at it like that, isn't AEW the one invading their territory during the holiday season? Well. Now, I mean, realistically, <laughs> realistically, that's not the case. I don't want people thinking that. I mean, these places are two hours apart. There's a million wrestlers that live in Florida. Uh, I think I, I don't that know what be, that may be a, uh, an underestimation. I wouldn't be surprised like to see both both shows do okay. I, you know, and I think World's End, I think, is going to do what it does. I just think, you know, he, again, people there are going to the go to WWE yeah. shows are going to go. Mike, before we go, right, school's yeah, going to yeah, be out of, out of session. So you're looking at not having all these students in, in the addition financial arena. So plus one, maybe WWE. Mm. Hopefully they got a good deal on the building. We'll see. It's something to talk about. Nothing wrong with that because that's what we do here. But then we also have to pay bills and go to break, which we are now. Add a boy, Mike. 
Back on the show, Mike Semperivi, filthy Tom Lawler, that son of a bitch set me up. Producer Dom set me up. It's true. That's what happened. I didn't miss my, my time, okay? Didn't go over break, okay? It's not something that I would do. That's a very AEW thing to do. Speaking of that, AEW Collision on Saturday went over time. We'll get to that. The main event ended exactly the way everyone thought it would. Not the finish, maybe, but the result. Time limit draw between FTR and the acclaimed, but Tony Schiavone had to speed through this like it was 1986, and he was doing the WTBS World Championship Wrestling Tour spots because the show went a few minutes long. And uh, he said he got word from Tony Khan that both teams would be challenging the Young Bucks at All In. Absolutely no surprise there whatsoever. Britt Baker opened the show by defeating Harley Cameron. Brian has already lamented this entire deal for subscribers on two shows, and I can almost guarantee you if it comes up, he will tomorrow as well when we preview Wednesday's Dynamite. They did not announce Baker being on the show until Friday on Rampage, and regardless of what you think about her, she's one of their brightest stars, and you need to leave, you know, have some kind of forward looking as far as being able to plan out what TVs these folks are going to be on. With the situation you're in right now, you're staring down the barrel of football on top of it like... If you have somebody, MJF is going to be on Saturday, Britt Baker, Orange Cassidy, John Moxley, I don't know who their biggest movers or biggest names are or what the perception is, but like those people, I would think Britt Baker's one of them. You kind of got to advertise that, so I get it. Open the show by defeating Harley Cameron, but what really got to Brian was afterwards when Mercedes and Camille came down to the ring, Britt grab, grabbed a kendo stick, and Tom, not as good with the kendo stick as Mishin is, uh, Britt snuck up uh, behind Mercedes, uh, got the lockjaw on her last week. That probably should have been the angle this week because instead she challenges and runs after, grabs her kendo stick, goes after Mercedes, and Camille gets stopped by Camille, took, who took the stick, broke it over her knee, big, gave her a big boot, laid her out, threw her in the, into the ring, laid her out there as well too. It just felt like at least this angle should have been last Wednesday and the angle on Wednesday where Britt got Mercedes and got the lockjaw on her and Camille needed to save her from it. That sh probably should have been on Saturday, but any thoughts on Britt getting laid out so badly here uh, leading into this match at Wembley? I mean, my only thought is that doesn't she have a role in Cobra Kai? Shouldn't she be better with these this weapons fighting? The Kabuto. Kabuto. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.